All right, guys, girls, we are international this week, but barely international. We are up in Canada, our northern neighbors, our northern friends, our northern allies. And we're in Toronto, and we're here for six days. We're staying at the Sheridan Center. It is the X Four Seasons. It's a huge complex. It's the largest convention center downtown in Toronto. It has a ton of amenities, and it's right downtown. Uh, we're going to do some pizza. We're going to do some cool drinks. And of course, I'm going to give you a comprehensive overview of the hotel. How could I not? I'm there for six days. We're going to do the ins and outs of it. So. Without any further ado, let me get down there and we're going to get started for the week. We're doing Toronto and this is the Sheridan Center video. There is a planned and controlled power outage tonight in this hotel on a Saturday night from 1.30 a.m. to 3 a.m. So I wanted to get back to the room and give you a quick room tour. We're going to do the lobby, which is absolutely palatial. This lobby is amazing. Again, this is an X Four Seasons hotel. They built it as a Four Seasons, so the lobby is very, very palatial, very grandiose, um, a ton of just great aesthetics. It is very, very opulent. Uh, let's do this room real quick, though. Let's do this. And uh, you know what? The room is pretty basic. Basic in sense of functionality. It isn't over the top. This is just a standard king suite. They did call this a suite and an upgrade. Uh, I don't know if I would agree with that. But uh, as you walk in here, let's just quickly do, um, well, we got a full length mirror. All right, so we have a full length mirror. What's up? Uh, I said I was done doing closet tours, but I want to say one thing. Very, very wide closet. Love how they have the ironing board way in the back and a thin, thin modern robe. I'm a fan of these thin ones. Thick ones are too insulative. Uh, when we get to the bathroom, let's see what's going on in here. Uh, we have some artwork on here. I love the recessed lighting and the ambient lighting on these mirrors. It gives great natural light. And that's really what you want in a mirror is natural light. So I really, really like that. Um, love that this glass is very high quality, not a smudge or a print on it. I turned on the shower real quick because I wanted to check and see if you could turn on both of these at the same time. All right, I love it when you have dual head functionality. I see a lot of dual head showers, but sometimes uh, they are dichotomous. And what I mean by that is you can only have one on at the same time. All right, and this one, you can have both, and I like that. It's just really, really cool. I love dual shower heads. They feel great. So I think all Sheridans have Le Grand Bon. Did I say that right? Is that how you say that name? My French is poor. My French relations are even worse, all right? My Canadian French relations are not that good. But Le Grand Bon, all right, so someone correct me on that. How do you say that? I'm going to try to say it. I'm going to say that poorly until someone comments on how to say it. So if you can phonetically spell that for me in a comment below, I'd like to be able to say that correctly. Come on, educate me. I want to learn. This channel is about learning uh, via osmosis. So anyway, um, love the recessed lighting. Love the shower. Really, really high quality glass. Got a nice smooth glide on it. I like that. Towels galore. You know I'm a towel nut. I know it's kind of weird, but I like it. Towels, towels, towels. You can never have enough of them. Um, one thing I like, this is not something I use, but look at the articulation on this mirror. And if I had to empathize or try to put myself in someone else's shoes, I mean, you could get a really great view of yourself if you want to do some touch-ups or something. Uh, obviously, that's not something I do, but look how far this mirror articulates. I've never seen a mirror articulate this far out before. I mean, this is almost over the sink. It is over the sink. Um, so if you want to get up close and personal and really see something, uh, you could do that here. All right, besides that, pretty typical. We have some artwork here, and I think that is it for the bathroom. Uh, more artwork, more artwork. I really do like the artwork. This does have an older feel. This place was built in the 70s. All right, so we do have some Four Seasons 
stylistic concerns. Four Seasons has very conventional, very traditional, somewhat, I'd say, Victorian um, type vibes to it. And, uh, you know, when the Sheraton bought it, obviously, it's going to maintain that feel until they decide to completely remodel. This room has been updated once, but it probably could use an update again. I'm not complaining. I'm just saying it does have that Four Seasons type feel, which is a bit conventional and a bit traditional. Um, even though there isn't any light up on the ceiling, uh, there is a ubiquity of light, which gives the room plenty. Um, I really like a lot of light to get my work done or to even just see myself in a full length mirror. Uh, or in a mirror like this. We do have some outlets here. Okay, so we have outlets and USB. And then one thing I also really, really like is that they have um, an iPhone, a new iPhone capable um, charging and Bluetooth station. And then again, they have some ports and USB items right by the bed. So if you're laying in bed right here, you know, sometimes when they have the ports right here, um, you need almost a six foot or even nine foot cable to reach over here and be comfortable. When you have the ports just right here, um, it makes it very, very easy. You could have the standard three or four foot cable and be just fine. So I really, really like it when hotels put the accessory ports and plug-in ports and USB ports right at the closest spot to the bed. That's very cool. Uh, I have not done a bed test yet. We're going to get to that. We're going to get to room service at some point. Like I said, I'm going to be here for probably five to six days. So we're going to explore this. There are um, at least one to two places to eat on campus here. We're going to check that out. Um, this place is absolutely huge. Again, it is 1,300 rooms. It is the largest convention center in downtown. And when I walked in, and I'm going to show you this lobby, this lobby had more going on for it than the Ritz-Carlton one in Toronto. And when I walked in, I almost got like a Vegas vibe. I mean, it's Saturday night and people were dressed nicely, looking good, going out. There was a lot of energy. Uh, I would say that this is an it place to be. And when I talked to the receptionist, when I walked in, I said, what's going on here? Uh, is this typically normal? She's like, yeah, people come down here. This is a thoroughfare for the city. Apparently a lot of the city transit walks through this lobby of the building because apparently there is a connectivity between the main buildings in Toronto. Somebody could probably explain that better than me, but this was it. I mean, if you, if you would have transplanted me and not told me where I was and said, James, we're outside of Vegas hotel. And you know what that's like when you get outside of Vegas hotel on a Saturday night, people looking really great, feeling really great, lots of energy. I got that vibe on a more minuscule scale, but again, much more so than the Ritz Carlton in this city. So no refrigerator. You do have some coffee down here. I like how it's hidden because it frees up space up here. I like how this pulls out very classy, lots of storage. Okay. We have a luggage thing over here and last but not least, uh, we are going to get <clears throat> to this bed. Should I stop doing bed test? because I, I feel like I'm gonna to have to become a bedding expert because I always say that they're really good which they are I will say this is probably one of the firmest beds I've been at all year if I had to rate the firmness and rate it on an eight I like it this is right up my alley Toronto uh, every time I come back here uh, I, I, I re it reinvigorates and re-engages me with the city so anyway, that's it for tonight. It's going to be a big week. We're here for a while and we have a lot to do. So I'm going to get to bed tonight and I'll see you guys tomorrow at some point. Hotel update, about 2.15 a.m. in the morning. Haven't been able to fall asleep yet. The power just went out. I talked about the routine power outage scheduled from 1.30 to 3 a.m. It just went out right now. It's about 2.15. But because of the lack of light in the room, it's provided an opportune chance to film the downtown city skyline. So this is what it looks like. And uh, yeah, Toronto's a beautiful city. And this is it, this is right at the heart of downtown. This location is perfect. So if you're looking for a location in the heart of the city with everything at your fingertips from a downtown perspective, when you're just a walk or a cab ride away from pretty much anything downtown. And then the pool, which is right where you're looking at right now, you can't see it, it is that black spot. Uh, that's the pool. They have a pool here. So it is fall. I don't know if I have a chance to go tour it, but we're going to try to get down there tomorrow. All right, so one last view of the Toronto skyline before bed. All right, we'll see you guys tomorrow. Good morning. I felt like we were just here, and we were. Uh, we were here about six or seven hours ago. I just woke up, and... Uh, you know, we, we went to bed and we looked at a beautiful 
sprawling view of Toronto and as promised here is the Sunday morning view all right so you can see kind of the lake there in the background right behind the spire right behind the CN Tower and then here is the city and it's perfect weather right now and I mentioned that because it's supposed to rain on and off all week so we have been blessed with a beautiful morning view and here is what the city looks like during the day so there's the pool right there that's on the third level we're gonna try to make it down there I saw one person there are two people down there using it functionally and then I think another person down there who's just getting started uh, it looks like it's still warm enough outside for people to go down there and, and use it so, all right so on my way to work but I had to stop down on level three it was right on the way it is brisk out here in the fall so these people are hardcore and I really respect that because this is not lounging weather as you can see nobody else here is lounging uh, but you really have to respect and appreciate the people who are exercising but if you were here in the summer I think this would be a great place to be as you can see lots of chairs uh, you could probably come out here and maybe have a drink or a cocktail. They have some umbrellas. They have some L couches. Uh, a ubiquity of seating. All right, seating all around. And it has somewhat of an indoor-outdoor theme. So if you wanted to wade, you, uh, you could do so indoor uh, or at least with an overhang. So if the elements were bad, but it was in the summer and it was still warm, you could probably do some wading and whatever underneath uh, the shelter. As you can see at the time, why it was the second tallest hotel in toronto i don't know where it is today but when it was built it was the second tallest and it keeps on going and that's really cool very very quick hotel update for you guys it's ironic because when i first came here i thought i had four or five days here almost a full week and i thought i'd have more than enough time an ample amount of time to show you everything this hotel had to offer and I'm rushing. I'm really rushing because there's a lot to see and plus I'm working during the day and night. All right, so we saw the pool and right now I'm going to go try to make last dinner call at the restaurant downstairs. The place is called B&B. There is an Irish pub that is connected to this place, although it's not an official part of the hotel. Therefore, it's an elective. Uh, I'm going to try to make it happen. It's not a proper pub. It's not something I would do a proper pub video on, but it is adjacent to the hotel. It is connected, even though it's not official. I'm going to try to get in there and at least show you what it's like. It's a weird themed pub because it's a steakhouse and a pub. Uh, typically, you don't see it. I have never seen uh now that I recollect, I've never seen an Irish pub and a steakhouse combined into one concept. Uh, and this place does it. Really, they're two different concepts, but it's a tourist hotel, and I see what they're trying to do. They're trying to play to both audiences. So I'm going to try to get in there and at least order one thing for you so I can show you what the atmosphere lo it looks like. Just went to the gym. It's the best hotel gym I've been to all year. And I just did at the Renaissance, and I said that Renaissance is a top three or top five gym I've been to all year. This is the best. It's awesome. Uh, I stay at Marriott Properties, so I only have Marriott Properties in my recollection, uh, but this is one of the top Marriott gyms I've ever been to, period. I'm talking the JW Marriott in Cancun is a memorable one, uh, the, obviously the Cosmopolitan in Las Vegas, which is part of the Marriott ecosystem, that is a memorable one. In fact, they have two there. It is of that caliber. Now, this is the second largest hotel, I believe, in Toronto with 1,300 rooms three buildings and a conference center yeah it's gonna have a nice gym and it doesn't disappoint and that's one thing i preach here as you know is proportionality the gym should be as proportional in size as it is to the hotel and this is a large hotel and this gym doesn't disappoint i've been to worse standalone gyms uh like a 24 hour or or whatever so this place is really really good so anyway i'm going to rush downstairs going to try to order a quick bite show you guys what the restaurant looks like i believe again it's called b and b after that hopefully everybody will be cleared out of the gym it is open 24 7 and that's usually a great time late night is usually a great time to give you guys a tour since no one is in there and besides that we still have a few more things to, to see um, i took some panning shots of the waterfall i took some shots of the pool already i don't know where i'm going to insert those in this video but you will see those overall it's a great experience perhaps the best bed i've been in all year the bathroom is a little small by the way i'm going to go over that later and i'm also going to tell you why i'm not disappointed that it's small usually that's something that disgruntles me but in this situation, I'm not disgruntled. I'm going to tell you why. But I need to stop this rhetoric because I need to go down and get us some food so you can at least see what this hotel, bar, and restaurant is like. So I'll see you downstairs. All day menu is available till 11 p.m. at night. And then they do serve food until midnight. This menu gets abbreviated and turns into a bar slash late night menu. 
So here we go. Here we have a tropical Hawaiian. I called it a blue Hawaiian originally. It, I mean, it is a blue Hawaiian, but it's a tropical Hawaiian. Very simple drink, vodka, blue caracal, and pineapple juice. And then for dinner, I ordered the quesadilla, spicy chorizo. And then I also ordered the cheesesteak sandwich. I haven't had a cheesesteak sandwich in the longest time. I saw it, gravitated towards it, looking forward to it. So there we go. And this is B&B. Bam, look at these quesadillas. They look delicious. And I love when they give you triple sauce on the side. Uh, we have guacamole, we have sour cream, and we have a salsa. And again, these are the quesadillas. Uh, cheese quesadilla with Tex-Mex onions, heirloom peppers, guacamole, salsa, sour cream, obviously on the side. And I added chorizo to it. They look hefty. I love it when there's actually sustenance and, uh, and stuff inside. A lot of times you order quesadilla and it's all quesadilla. Uh, there's, it's mainly all bread, but there's stuff inside here. I like that. All right, I'm going to get to it and I'll report back. All right, so while I was recording this, this just came out. This is piping hot, literally, and I love it. Hefty portions are great. Okay, back to this quesadilla real quick. This is really crunchy, and then this is soft. It's cooked perfectly. I love it when the ends are crisp, almost somewhat just perfectly burnt, right? Per perfectly singed, but yet it's really soft and really pliable right here. These are so good, and that is so steaming. I'm not even gonna get into it yet. I'm gonna start here and get into that, but could this be Philly worthy? Could it? We're gonna find out. This is unreal. This is an absolute definite. I was gonna go double definite, but this is so good. By law, the quesadilla cannot be in the same league as this because this transcends everything. This um, cheesesteak sandwich is so good. It's an absolute definite. I can't rave about it enough. This was unbelievable. This is a whole nother strata, all right? This is a whole nother stratosphere. Uh, amazing, absolute definite. I'm gonna talk more on my way out. Uh, but both these two, if you come to this place, if you come to B&B, all right, and you're looking for a great app to share and then a great, uh, a, a great entree, one and two, and you will not regret it. You'll be thanking me. You have to get the cheesesteak sandwich. Yes, yes, yes. So B&B was amazing. Uh, I went to Akira Black. It's Akira Black or Black Akira. I believe it's Akira Black last night. And this place would be like a Nobu on steroids. Uh, very, very high-end Japanese food. Very exquisite. Um, really chef-inspired meals. My meal at B&B was better than that. Um, when I left Akira Black, I just wasn't fulfilled. You know, there's an old adage where the more expensive the food is, the smaller it is. And that was so true at Akira Black. Uh, at there, I had like a $22 quesadilla and a $24 cheesesteak. They were so good. It was amazing. And I could have split both of them between another person. And I eat a lot, as you've seen on the channel. I have, my, I have a voracious appetite. Both of those could have been split between two people. So here we are, by the way. Um, I'm going to show you a bit of the lobby. It's a great chance to give you an overlook of the lobby. We were just there. There's B&B, &B, all right, as, a, as an all-day menu. Again, food until 11, late night food until 12, full menu until 11, late night food until 12. And here is the beautiful lobby of the Sheraton Center. This place is awesome. Uh, I wish I just would have went to B&B &B last night. That place is twice as good and a sixth of the price. All right, so as I roll down here, I am off. I'll take a look at this, by the way. I did took some video of this during the daytime, but here is some video of this courtyard landscaping at night. It's the beautiful waterfall. This is a really, really great place. Now, as you can tell, this place is buzzing. There's a city thoroughfare that goes through the lobby, so there's a ton of foot traffic. Uh, as you can tell, it's a conference hotel. It's a conference hotel, so there's a ton of people. It's 11 o'clock at night, and this place is buzzing. Guys, two o'clock in the morning. Nobody's here. Thank God. If it was, they got a problem. And number two, I'd have a problem because I couldn't film. I hate infringing on people's privacy. Let people work out in private. This is the best hotel gym I've been at all year. Arguably top three to five ever. 
The only ones that would rival it would be the JDW Marriott in Cancun and also the Cosmopolitan in Las Vegas. Both are under the Marriott umbrella. A lot of people forget that the autograph collection hotels are underneath the Marriott umbrella. And a lot of people forget that the Cosmopolitan in Las Vegas is an autograph collection hotel, which means it's a Marriott ecosystem hotel. Here we go. Great yoga area right here. Lots of bands, foam rollers, balance balls, things like that. Uh, legs. This, this gym has fixed barbells, okay? It has a Smith machine. It's got double benches. Weights up to 100 pounds. Just wait. Lots of symmetry in this gym. We have, count them, eight treadmills. Look at the, the litany of machines here. We got um, Butterfly Press. Looks like someone forgot their jacket here. Oh, wait. That's mine. All right, so we have a, a butterfly press, we have a shoulder press, chest press, we have a row, just a, a litany of machines. Two types of stair machines, not one, but two types. We have a traditional, and then what I call a conventional. So this is a traditional, this came out first, and then this is a synthetic one. So whichever one you prefer, they have both. So here are the machines, here are the machines, eight treadmills, not too close together, so you know, there's enough space. Count them eight elliptical machines. All right, eight of them. Take my word for it, there's eight. Three cycle bikes. One uh, lower back upright. Then we also have uh, a row machine. And then we have a couple horizontal bikes. Actually, we have three. We have thrice. And then, a, uh, and then we have a cable cross machine. How many pull-ups are you going to do right now? I guarantee I can't do 15. Guarantee it. I'm not going to try it. And then, of course, we have the pool out here. And this is where we were yesterday. Uh, I came out here in the morning and I showed you what it looked like. Here's what it looks like at night. And again, this gym is 24-7 access. If you were so inclined to work out at 2 o'clock in the morning, you'd have this place to yourself. This place is better than a lot of standalone gyms I've been to. Easily the best gym I've been at all year. Top three to five of all time in hotel gyms. So if you want to make sure that you have access to a gym and you're coming to Toronto, you don't have to go any further than floor number three at the Sheraton Center Hotel. I'm off the bed. We still need to check off the club level on floor number 43. So anyway, I'm off the bed. We had a great day today and I will see you guys when I see you. All right, quick hotel update for you guys and gals. Uh, this bed is amazing. One of the best beds, if not the best bed I've been in all year. I really, really like this hotel. There are a few drawbacks, I'll get to that in a second, but I really enjoy this hotel. Lately, uh, as you may or may not know, uh, I have, I've been having difficulty sleeping in hotels, and I'm not sure if that just comes over time. I've heard a lot of salespeople, a lot of people who spend a litany of time on the road for an extended period of time complain about eventually losing the ability to sleep in hotels. Back in the day, I could sleep anywhere. I could sleep on a floor, I could sleep on a couch, I could sleep in a chair, I could sleep in a hard bed, soft bed, loud bed, stinky room, great room, palatial room. I could, I could sleep anywhere. And over like the past 18 to 24 months, I've had difficulty just sleeping in hotels, period. But I've also never traveled more than I have in the last 18 to 24 months. I mean, I travel over 120,000 miles in the air and over 100 nights on the road, so um, it's in the top 1% of travelers. And I'm not sure if with, once you reach and sustain that level, then your, uh, then your circadian rhythm, um, your, 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 your sleep clock, I wonder if that gets uh, impaired, either uh, in the midterm or permanently. We're gonna find out together. All right, love this bed. Can't talk about it enough, love this bed. Uh, been sleeping in a great, uh, both for naps and at night. Uh, I want to show you what I mean about that bathroom here in a second, why I don't like it, but it's okay. And then we need to get to the club lounge on the 43rd floor. That's really the last box we have to check off. Club lounges usually mirror the size and the scope of the hotel. So if it's a great hotel, uh, usually the club lounge is, is spectacular. Uh, if it's a mediocre hotel, we'll typically uh, the club lounge follows suit. There is one exception. The club lounge at the Cosmopolitan Hotel in Vegas, a five-star hotel, one of the most cosmopolitan hotels in the world. Their club lounge is awful. Uh, except the fact there's a secret about that lounge that I will show you at some point. Um, but, it's, but it's forgettable, easily. 
Uh, in fact, it's a major, major letdown. So I'm really excited because this is a huge hotel. The gym is awesome. They have a pool. Uh, what's what's the club lounge going to be like? We're going to find out later tonight. Speaking of the pool, thank God there's a pool here. You saw it already. And thank God it's connected to the fitness facility. You want to know why? I forgot my workout clothes, specifically my workout pants. So I've been using my pool shorts. I always bring swim trunks. Travel hack. Quick travel hack for you. Always bring a pair of swim trunks no matter where you go. It could be anywhere. It could be Sweden or it could be Costa Rica. Always bring travel trunks. They saved me on this trip. I'm in Toronto. I didn't know this place had a pool. I assumed it probably would because of the size of the hotel, uh, but I, I, I didn't know. And thank God I packed a pair of swim trunks or else I would not have been able to work out. And when I can't do that, I can't eat. When I can't eat, I'm not hungry, all right? There's a whole ecosystem we have to maintain here. So even though I look like a dork, <laughs> uh, I'm able to pull it off because the, the, the pool is right next to the gym. And at least, uh, you know, I can say, hey, uh, uh, you know, well, I'm, you know, at least it appears that I'm probably going to do a workout and then a pool session. And you might say, James, what do you really care what people think? I don't. That's why I'm wearing it. Okay, that's why I'm working out in my in my swim trunks. But it's 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 pretty uh, uh, it's pretty flagrant. It's pretty flagrant and nerdy. Uh, I was I was a little, you know embarrassed for myself in there. Look at this, right? What a dork. All right, here's what I don't like about this bathroom. It's really, really small, okay? It, it's as small as the W in Chicago, and I was highly critical of that hotel, as you know. Now, why am I not highly critical of this? Well, it was built in the 70s, and it's kind of a flashback to what was acceptable, to what was acceptable back then. In today's hotel world, in today's hotel paradigm, this is unacceptable. So as the world has grown in population, as space has become more finite and more scarce, we demand more from our upscale hotel rooms because this is no longer Four Seasons. It was no longer adequate and worthy of the Four Seasons brand, and I can see why. Uh, you know, listen, this is coming down a little bit. This is chipped. You can see that this is peeling off of here. Uh, this is probably the original one from, from the 1970s. The lighting is new. Uh, the shower is new. But this is from the 70s, so this is really a flashback of the pinnacle of hotel standards almost 50 years ago. All right, so 50 years ago, this was an acceptable size. In today's world, where it's much more difficult to find space and space is so much more expensive, Americans and Canadians demand more in the hotel room, at least if you're paying up. So, what point am I deriving? I am saying this. It's a Sheridan. It is not... A W. It is not a Ritz Carlton. It is not a St. Regis. Therefore, I'm not upset that the bathroom is small. And you can see how small it is. I actually put my stuff on the toilet while I'm working out. Uh, if you were to, if you and a friend or a couple has any aspirations of getting ready together in this bathroom, don't even think about it. Because uh, the only way you could do it is one person in the shower, and by the time they get out, uh, there is no room for dual a dual setup here all right this is this is it so it's actually so so uh it's so tiny in here that i actually use the toilet which is kind of gross actually i should really get that stuff off of there i just used the toilet to put my stuff on there um and travel hack for you uh you know who travels more than me well some people but not a lot right i'm you know so what does a guy who travels the world constantly what does he do how does he pack his stuff grocery plastic bag is what I keep all my liquids in. Okay, that's what I keep all my liquids in. Um, and I tie that up in my suitcase in case something explodes or something breaks, whether that's my mouthwash or a hairspray or a bottle or something, which happens. At least all are self-contained. I just wrap it in a knot, it's waterproof. So if something happens, um, it's all contained when I arrive and I can obviously always find another bag if that one breaks down. And then I do use a, a Tumi travel bag um, that has really, really, really great quality. So yeah, I've been using, the bathroom is so small, I've been using um, that as kind of a shelf because you have a comb here, toothbrush here, and there's no room for anything else. So, But it's not a W. I was really critical of the W Hotel in Chicago Lakeshore because that is positioned as a five-star hotel next to the Ritz-Carlton, next to the St. Regis. This is a four-star hotel. So you get some leniency, and that's why I'm not upset. All right, I'm going to the gym. And then uh, hopefully I have time to go to the club lounge on 
floor number 43. It closes at 10.30. It's 9.30 right now. I'm thinking if we gym it really fast and get back up here and then show you the club lounge. All right, I'm out. All right, all right. Last night here in Toronto at the Sheridan Center, and I'm going to go upstairs up to the Sky Club. Um, Sky Club. The club lounge. It's on the 43rd floor. I was up there a couple nights ago, but didn't have the opportunity to do a real tour because I didn't have my camera on me. So it's about 10 o'clock. Actually, it's about 10 after 10. I'm accurate on that because it closes at 10.30. So we're going to get up there right before it closes. Hopefully there won't be too many people up there. So Guys, so we are up here. Uh, this is the view from the 43rd floor up on the club level. Um, you have dual opposing views of Toronto. One overlooks the part of the city that has uh, the spire, the CN Tower. And then one overlooks uh, the entertainment district, which you can see right there. Okay, there's the entertainment district. At least what I was told is the entertainment district. I've only been to Toronto a few times, but I'm told that is what it looks like. It looks like a, uh, a Leicester Square or Times Square type, uh, type screen, if you see it right there. Okay, so there that is. Boom. And you can see it has a sprawling view of the city. It's light in here, so there are reflections. It's tough to see, but on the 43rd floor, if you're here in person, it's absolutely stunning. Okay, so here's what it looks like. You have TVs here, you have uh, a printer, fax machine, and you have a few things over there. Uh, coffee here in the morning, dual coffee machines, all right? Uh, this bar closes at 10 p.m., which is good to know because they just cut me off before I even started. It's fine, I came up here for you anyway, okay? And then, if we, uh, Lots of seating up here, very palatial. A beautiful, bold TV up here. Here's what it looks like. Very quiet, as you can see. It's a great place to get some work done. Um, got a beautiful, bold TV right here, very decorative. They got some couch seating, got some table seating. And then here's the opposing view of Toronto, which is absolutely beautiful. So there's a view of the, uh, of the, of the spire, of the CN Tower. It's tough to see, but there it is. And again, the reflection in here does not do its justice. If you guys come up here, if you're looking for a hotel with a club level, this is one of the best I've been to. Perhaps the best. Um, in fact, I think it is. This is probably the best club lounge I've ever been to. But again, this is, at one time, I think the second largest uh, hotel in Toronto. And um, it's a huge hotel, 1,500. So I always preach proportionality, as you know. And this one has it when it comes to the club level and the gym. So uh, breakfast up here in the morning and then hors d'oeuvres at night. So we're gonna get out of here, but I wanted to show this to you guys before I left. So my, uh, my time in Toronto is ending and my time at the Sheraton is ending. Uh, they're ending concurrently, I'm going home tomorrow. And uh, I try to get outside. I was gonna get, kinda do a final shot. I was gonna try to get cinematic. Try to get, try to, you know, try to get cinematic with you guys outside, but uh, they shut this waterfall access off. This is a really cool part of the hotel. Uh, I imagine this is quite uh, the beautiful place in the spring, summer, and fall, in the winter, not so much. So I'm just over here on the second level. Uh, it has a great overview, a great purview of the hotel. I found a little perch up here, and uh, I'd say I recommend this hotel. You guys saw everything about it. It's got a great gym. It's got some great dining options, great food, uh, great club access. It has a pool. Uh, it's right downtown. It's, it has a great price. It's got some Mountie artwork over here. Someone tell me the first time they learned about the Mountie. Was it in school or was it through the WWE wrestler? For me, it's a WWE wrestler, right? Sergeant Slaughter, the Mountie, the big boss man. Those were the glory days. All right, anyway, uh, it's a great hotel. It's, it's like, it's very polished as it should be. It's, uh, it's X Four Seasons. And just, they have great fit and great quality on the materials. This is uh, leather wrapped, right? This railing is leather wrapped, it's leather wrapped, it's brass down there. This is just a random spot on the second level. And you'll see they have a couch, they have some seating. It is pretty cool. So I'll tell you one thing that is a little irritating about this hotel and it's all about personal preference. All right, I've said this a few times. I hope this is the last time I say it for your sake. It is a large hotel, all right? Huge sprawling hotel. As I said, 1,300 rooms, at one time the second largest. Um, with that comes activity, hyperactivity. It's a conference center. You're going to be dealing with conference crowds, okay? Lots of suits, lots of activity in the elevators, uh, just activity everywhere. You're going to get that at huge hotels. You're going to get that at huge hotels. Um, you're going to get it anywhere. If you're looking for something with a bit more seclusion, and if you're looking for something that has more of a boutique-esque vibe, you may want to look elsewhere. 
I personally found this very refreshing. I don't have a type. People with types tend to pigeonhole things. All right, they, they tend to not get out of their comfort zone. So I don't have a type. I like anything. I'm open to anything. I try to be as open-minded as possible. Not always the easiest thing to do. A lot of teachers and ex-girlfriends would probably disagree with that, but I'm trying to change. And uh, this channel is a part of that, right? We're getting out and we're always gonna try new stuff on this channel. Um, but you know, I like boutique hotels. I like large hotels, right? I like hotels that are in nature. I like hotels that are right downtown. This one is right downtown. So be prepared to deal with a downtown metropolitan large hotel scene. And that means crowded elevators, um, crowded restaurants, and just a lot of people around you. All right, so just bear that in mind. Besides that, um, I would say this hotel is definitely a recommend. Uh, I, you will not be disappointed if you come here. Um, and those that you have that have stayed here recently, let me know if you concur or disagree with me. All right, so I have I have a flight tomorrow at 6:45 in the morning. I have to get up really really early for that. Toronto, it's been six nights and it went by very very quickly. Although I did get my fill, so I'm good for a while. But I always really, really enjoy the city. I made some other videos. Make sure you check those out. Really, really enjoyed my time here. And I'm looking forward to coming back.